Yeah. Meantime, all eyes on Congress as Democrats push for gun control following the Texas school massacre. Democrat Senator Chris Murphy, who was a local lawmaker in Connecticut during the Sandy Hook shooting, says serious talks are underway. I was in touch with Senator Cornyn, Senator Toomey, um, other Republicans and Democrats yesterday. Um, these are serious negotiations, uh, and we are going to um, continue to meet through early next week to try to find some common ground. Now, listen, I've been clear. I'm not going to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Of course, I would love to ban assault weapons. Joining us now is Army combat veteran and Florida congressional candidate Corey Mills. Corey, uh, we just want your reaction to what you just heard. Well, the bottom line is I think that they're trying to treat the symptoms while recognizing the disease. You know, the reality here is that we have an issue in mental health. We have an issue with not having the readiness and the preparedness of individual schools. We do not have a standardization of protocols on how we actually treat every single school. We don't have something that says each school must be hardened, each school must have a standoff distance, each school must have an armed resource officer. Uh, we must have key fob entry. We must have. So while we're going forward and we're doing these Department of Justice investigations or what we call the military after action reviews, we should also be looking at the threat and mitigation measures. We should be looking at each individual office or each individual school. You know, we have $54 billion to spend over the last two months in Ukraine to protect the communities, to protect the children of Ukraine, but we're not putting that money back into our own communities where we're actually trying to save and protect our children here at home. Let's not forget, Columbine was 1999. It is 2022. To your point, they've had a lot of time to figure out how to harden each and every school in America, mm -hmm. and they have not yet done so. Hopefully, they will figure it out. Meantime, want to get your thoughts on this. This Memorial Day, you are remembering the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice to protect our constitutional freedoms and liberties, especially, of course, the 13 heroes who died last year in Afghanistan. Corey, your thoughts. Well, Todd, as you know, I was actually uh, part of a team that conducted the very first successful rescue of a mother and three children out of Afghanistan. And we were actually on the landing for HKIA on August 26, whenever these 13 brave heroes gave their lives. You know, as President Lincoln said, they paid the last full measure. And as we say today, they've given the ultimate sacrifice. Today's a day of remembrance. Today's a day of reflection, not to try and play politics to blame the left or blame the right, but to really reflect on the cost of freedom. And I would ask everyone, I implore you to go ahead and look on online or search for those in your own village, your own community, your own township that actually has lost someone who has paid that sacrifice for your freedoms and your constitutional liberties. Today is really not about barbecue and more about honoring our fallen and honoring the heroes of this country. Uh, I want to take one special moment. I want to recognize uh, congressional candidate uh, Joe Kent's wife, Shannon, who is a Navy combat veteran who gave her life in Syria. And I want to go ahead and thank her and thank him and thank all the Gold Star families for supporting these brave heroes who went out and gave two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. Corey, as a combat veteran or a combat vet, I mean, what does this day mean to you on a personal level? You know, for me, it really hits home to, to think about the brothers who we've lost overseas, to think about, you know, the fact that it could have been any of us. You know, there is no bomb or bullet which has a name on it. It's just one of those things that happens whenever we're in combat and it's things that are uncontrollable. But, you know, for me, it's about thinking and reflecting on those who I served with. It's thinking about the families they left behind. It's thinking about the fiancés. Uh, the mothers, the, the the daughters, the children that they've left, left behind. And also just looking at the polarization that's gone on in America and the fact that if we're going to come together at any point in time, it should be today, to remember all those who are willing to give that sacrifice and to honor those sacrifices that has been made on our behalf. Earlier in the program, I believe you had the read about John Stewart mm -hmm. speaking to a number of veterans and families of fallen veterans. And he said, why every year when I'm here, is it the same audience? Where are the people who don't have a connection necessarily in their family or in their friends to the military? Why are they not here? And I think that underscores a big problem that we have in our society this day and age. People don't understand where they got their freedom from. And there's a lack of gratitude there. Do we change that? Is there anything happening to change that? Because I feel like that's fundamental to understanding what America is all about. Well, I'll tell you, this is where your elected officials and where other Americans need to be very cautious in their dangerous narratives where they create division and they try and vilify things like our law enforcement officer, our military who served. 
you know, we must remember that our law enforcement officers are doing that. They're enforcing laws that were put in place. We need to think about our military who fought these wars, who don't vote on these wars, but go forward and actually fight on our stead. We have to start understanding the fact that Congress right now is only made up of only 17 percent military veterans, even four of those, uh, fewer of those are combat veterans. You know, this is really about trying to bring the nation together and understanding what it costs to keep us free. This is really about understanding the great land and the fact that we live in the greatest, freest nation on earth, so long as we can keep it. As they say, we're always one generation away from being able to lose this, and that's something that President uh, Reagan has said multiple times. But we have to bring ourselves together to at least, at minimum, honor the brave men and women who have been willing to give their lives in uniform for our freedoms, for our nation, for our freedoms of speech, and for our rights. Okay. And as you, we play these videos of people laying flowers and visiting the graves, hopefully this is something, it's not, it shouldn't be just today. This right. should be an everyday situation, an everyday site. So we thank you for everything you have done and obviously everyone who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us to, to be free and to have this day. So, Corey, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah.